so we will now begin with the letter to the philippians um just a little background on how the philippian church was formed and then we'll get into the details of the letter uh, the thing to um, know about this letter to the philippians it really reveals the heart of this philippian church it shows how committed they were to the lord it shows how strong they were in the lord um, it shows the 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 passion they had for god the sacrifices they made for him it shows the then the letter shows the high respect which paul had for these people so this is a challenging letter you know when we read the letter to the corinthian church uh, we may, we may pat ourselves on the back and you know say ha ah, these people uh, barely knew how to function in the church you know but then we are better off we know how to uh, behave uh, we know how to maintain uh, peace and coordination and unity uh, when we are exercising our gifts uh, you know so we can um, maybe feel a little good about ourselves when we look at the condition of the corinthian believers but my goodness when you read the letter to the philippians and look at the kind of uh, life that they led and the kind of example which they set for us it makes us uh, want to reach uh, to a higher level to reach the standards which the philippian church has set for the believers you know so it's a, a letter that we can learn much from um so um to first of all look at the background uh, how did this beautiful philippian church get formed uh, so the story the background story for that would be in acts chapter 16 verses 6 to 15 Uh, so, if you were to just turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter sixteen, uh, verses six to fifteen, we see that Paul and his companions are uh, traveling throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, and their idea is to, you know, move on to Asia Minor. That is their destination, their goal. They're moving towards Asia Minor, but then something happens in Asian uh, in in Acts chapter sixteen, verse seven. The Lord says. uh no no don't go uh, to asia minor so when they have reached the border of mysia and they are planning to enter into bithynia so that they can go on from there towards asia minor the spirit of jesus says no do not go there because that is not the correct time for them to go uh he he instructs them not to go there and then in verse 8 we see that they think okay fine if the lord does not want us to go in this direction um then uh, let us go towards troas but again they are stopped from going to troas because that night paul gets a vision and in the vision he sees a man from the macedonian region who is standing and begging and saying come over to macedonia and help us so god gives uh, paul this vision so that uh paul will know where he is meant to go next so they move they go to the macedonian region where you have the you know city of philippi and various other cities so they come to philippi uh in verse 13 acts chapter 16 verse 13 and they arrive on a sabbath day on a saturday um and they are aware that you know um people generally meet outside these cities uh, for a time of prayer and so uh, this being the sabbath day they know that at least one or two groups will be meeting somewhere outside the city uh, you know gates and uh, so uh, paul and his companions they set out for this uh, place near the river and so it says in act 16 verse 13 on the sabbath we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there so you have a bunch of ladies who have met you know have gathered over there to pray and uh, spend some time reflecting on the things of god they are not yet christians uh, they probably do not know much about christ or the gospel but they are god fearing people who have a heart to know the truth they have a desire to reach out to god and know god so that is the kind of group that is sitting over here um 
And this is where you basically have the seeds of the Philippines church sitting there. I doubt whether those, that bunch of ladies even realized how important they are. Out of that seed would grow an amazing church. Uh, and these are the very first you know, members of that church. So the ladies are sitting over there and the, the Paul and his companions begin to share the gospel and they are listening with much interest. Uh, in verse 14, we get to know that one of the ladies who is, um, who is seated over there uh, is a, a purple cloth merchant. Uh, so which basically means that she probably would be a wealthy lady uh, because purple cloth was uh, considered very valuable in those days. Uh, it was um, imported exported uh, so it had a lot of monetary value so she's basically a dealer in that um, and um, it says she was a worshiper of god which basically means uh, you know um, what they were called what they were called god worshipers and there are other terms which are used all these terms basically means that you are that this person is from a gentile background but they have made a commitment to become part of the Jewish faith because they believe that the God of the Jews is the living true God. Okay, so she's from a Gentile background, but she has become a worshiper of God, which basically means she has kind of converted to the Jewish faith. So she's that type of a person. And it says in uh, verse 14, Act 16, verse 14, it says, the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. So uh, uh, because she has a genuine interest, the Holy Spirit convicts her and she is able to believe what Paul is preaching. And it says in verse 15, when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. So they accept uh, this, this group of ladies, accept the Lord Jesus as their savior, and then um, they undergo water baptism to publicly declare that now they are no longer uh, converted to the, to the Jewish faith, but now from the Jewish faith, they have now converted to, their, to a faith in Jesus Christ. So they undergo the baptism ceremony. And then after that, uh, Lydia invites these missionaries to her home. She says, if you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. And so most probably in the early days, the church was you know, meeting in her home. And that's basically from where this church grows and becomes what it, you know, what it later on goes on, you know, goes to become. So uh, this is how the Philippine church begins. It begins with people who genuinely have a love for God. Uh, they respond to the message, which uh, the gospel message, which has been given. Uh, they invite the missionaries into their home. They are eager to learn more. And so with this kind of a group, the church begins. So, um, you know, just a thought uh, for those of us who may be involved in some kind of ministry work. I mean, it's not relevant whether we are in, uh, you know, whether we work in the secular field or whether we are in full time ministry. But all of us must be, you know, serving the Lord in some way or the other. So if you are running some small cell group somewhere, you know, if you are in charge of a Bible study somewhere, that group of people in, into whose lives you're investing, you know, who knows what can come out of that, out of that group. Never ever under, underestimate the group over which God has placed you. There's great potential there. There are people sitting over there who have a genuine hunger to know more about God and maybe to, to do something for God. And you have been placed over there in that group as uh, one of the more learned leaders, you know, someone who's, who's more familiar with the scriptures. So you're in a position to equip them. You're in a position to encourage them. And if you do that, who knows what that little group can grow into? I mean, the people in that group, Maybe they'll really go into their offices, their workplaces, and start sharing the gospel. So there's great power in little groups uh, because of the kind of hearts with which people are sitting in those small groups. So uh, Paul you know, didn't just dismiss them and saying, ah, a bunch of women. I mean, not even men, a bunch of women. You know, he didn't just dismiss them and say, ah, a bunch of women. Where's the point? Let's go find a group of men. No, he invested in them. And that led to the beginning of an amazing church. 
so let's take our small groups seriously. Let's understand that there's much potential there. And so in the same way that Paul gave his best in ministering to this group, let us give our best in ministering to whichever group you know we are part of. So having kind of uh, looked at that background, you, uh, as we still have a few minutes, uh, let's um, get into chapter one. Um, so if we could have someone read out for us the first seven verses, please. Uh, Philippians chapter one, verses one to seven. Philippians chapter one, verses one to seven. Paul and Timothy, born servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making request for you with all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. You all are partakers with me of grace. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, so yes, we will reflect on this passage when we come back from our break. Uh, thank you. We'll meet at 10 o'clock. <laughs> 